time to stand and sing. I will enter its gates with thanksgiving in my heart. <clears throat> as soon as I clear my throat. I will enter its gates with thanksgiving in my heart. I will enter its courts with praise. Say this is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice for he has made me glad. And little old, he has made me glad. He has made me glad. I will rejoice for he has made me glad. He has made me glad. He has made me glad. I will rejoice for he has made me glad. Sing it again. Will enter his gates with thanksgiving in my heart. I will enter his courts with praise. I will say this is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice for he has made me glad. He has made me glad. He has made me glad. I will rejoice.
one of these days I will learn to play those songs in more than one or two keys. Because Janet was back there singing bass. She couldn't get low enough. Don't you just have to put one of those little clippy things on your guitar? Well, I got one clippy, but it doesn't, it's got a little crease in it, so one string doesn't clip. <laughs> and that don't work. Oh, well. Praise the Lord anyway. It's good to sing. Every time I sing that song, I have to smile to myself the way we pronounce believed. Believe it. Believe it. I am persuaded. Oh, well. Anyway, how are you guys doing tonight? Anybody got a, anybody had a blessing of the Lord today? Ellen? Amen. Good. Anybody else? <laughs> your your faces match that. I probably did, I just wasn't paying attention. He probably did, he just wasn't paying attention. Amen. Amen. I'm glad. Don't you overdo it, though. Don't you overdo it. It's hot out there. You know, it's hot out there. I went uh, this afternoon and met um, the uh, one of the folks that is a regional coordinator for our Fellowship of Christian Athletes. Um, she lives in, her and her husband, they're, they both work for FCA and I think they live in Marlow now, but you know they got a lot of ties to Tuttle, and and uh, they uh, every once in a while FCA does what they call a Gatorade drop, where I'm sorry. This is Lloyd, I think. our farm in Guthrie. So today we made that happen for him, and now he's calling to tell me he needs in there again tomorrow. So I just I hope he didn't lock the gate. <laughs> anyway, I'm sorry about that. Uh, when I get that phone call, I always I try to leave my phone in my office, but I had texted and called several people that I'm waiting to hear back from on what's going on with them. So I went to my office and got my phone, and sure enough, it, rings and when it rings it rings in my hearing aids so you guys might not hear it but it drives me crazy anyway so I, I apologize for that anyway blessings of the Lord oh Gatorade so I, I met uh, the the uh, uh, Fellowship of Christian Athletes uh, folks they had uh, called me uh, late last week and asked if our church would be willing to donate some Gatorade for what they do with the what they call a Gatorade drop, and uh, what they did today is they came in and after our high school boys football practice, uh, they all gathered up and Fellowship of Christian Athletes folks gave a devotion to them, 
and uh, and then uh, I prayed for them, and uh, and we gave them a Gatorade. So it's called the Gatorade drop. They, of course, they were they were so hot after practice. I had the ice chests open. When they got out of practice, they grabbed a Gatorade. I took 80 bottles of it to me, but I, I don't know how many I could have used. You know, it uh, bless their hearts, they were so hot. But I told them, I said, uh, you've made it, you've made it through the last three weeks. The worst is over. This is game week. You know, so. Anyway, but, uh, but that was good. We're going to do the same thing on Friday afternoon to the softball team. Um, softball team, uh, high, school, high school varsity softball has a game on Friday afternoon against Cash. And Fellowship of Christian Athletes folks are coming in for that and doing a devotion with both teams, the team from Cash and the team from Tuttle. And we're going to do another Gatorade drop. So keep your offerings coming. I'm buying a lot of Gatorade. So, anyway, uh, I don't, they won't do it often. They just do it, you know, several, they do it several times a year, but generally only like once or twice for each team. So, it's not too awful bad. But anyway, but it's, uh, it's a joy to do that. It's a joy to be able to pray for them and uh, to uh, minister to them if possible. Um, I'm, uh, I'm glad they... I'm glad they call us when they need something, and uh, so that we have the opportunity to uh, to be out in uh, in front like that. Um, that being said, I also want to remind you we had our teacher appreciation luncheon last week, and uh, we had cards from teachers on how to pray for them and and some of the stuff that they need, and we've made those cards available out in the foyer. Uh, folks have taken some of them. I still have quite a few of them left, uh, which is not a big deal. But if you feel led to take one of those cards, let us know which card you took and then get the stuff for them and either get it to them or put it in a sack and bring it to us so that we can get it to them or something. Um, And if you don't want to take a card, give money. And we'll we'll go buy um, what they need. I need to, I need to buy quite a few Amazon gift cards and school supplies and some of that kind of stuff just for the cards that haven't been taken yet. So anyway, so don't forget that tonight. If you, uh, happen to want to be involved in that or can be involved in that, then, um, then, uh, make sure that, uh, make sure that you, you do that. Okay. Um, there's still sign up back there, I think, for our senior adult fall retreat. There's still room um, for uh, for folks to go. Uh, in fact, we got a call last week that said if we don't have not not us, but if we don't have a few more folks go from around the association, we have to have at least 50. And I think at uh, at the time that they called, they had like 44. So we still needed like six more people to go to even make a trip. I don't have any idea where that's at now. But, uh, but no, it's not too late. If you have changed your mind, decide you'd like to go to that, then we'd love to have you go. Just put your name back there, and, and, uh, and, we, can, uh, and we can go, okay? Um, let's, uh, let's look through our prayer sheet. Hopefully you guys uh, picked, up, uh, picked up one of these uh, prayer sheets. I actually am not sure that I got the the latest uh, copy of it, but we'll start through it. Um, our church family, uh, Charlie Guthrie, still on there, continue to pray for Charlie. Uh, shots in his back have helped some. He's gone to, he's gone to see a doctor about his neck, and had, they have scheduled an MRI, but it's not till September the 14th. And uh, when you're in as much pain as Charlie's in, that's still an awful long ways away. So... Anyway, so continue to pray for uh, for Charlie. Uh, Denise Robinette called the office today, and she's doing good. She said she's looking forward to the next adventure, whatever that is. So anyway, so I guess she's doing good. Uh, I went and saw Mike Stevens at Grace Living Center, and, uh, and he's doing well. Uh, he said he's getting up and walking. He said walking is what helps him the most. And uh, I said the only problem that he's got right now really is that his leg cramps up all the time. Apparently, 
you know, whatever ailment he has had has like the nerves have been crushed or compressed or something. And now that some of that is fixed, I guess he's still dealing with with some of that. But uh, but he is uh, he's doing well. Uh, Leroy, good to see you, brother. Glad you're well or doing better anyway. Pray that you keep getting better and better. Um, you know, as is the case, you know, Leroy said the doctor told him he should feel better in two or three days. Then the next time he talked to him, he said, well, no, I didn't mean days. I meant weeks. So <laughs> that's a little discouraging, but, but uh, hey, gives you something to look forward and hope to anyway. So... Uh, Lloyd Warner, Lloyd's, Lloyd's doing good. Uh, we got, we got uh, word this afternoon. Lloyd called me about 3 o'clock this afternoon and said that uh, Russ, Rusty, uh, passed away. Uh, passed away about uh, 2.30 this afternoon um, in the hospital under hospice care. Um, Lloyd said uh, that um, yesterday uh, he was fine with not coming to Oklahoma City and seeing Rusty, and he said in the last night, he said, I just got a sense that I needed to go. So I guess uh, Andy, uh, his granddaughter, and he got up early this morning and caught an airplane flight in, and uh, and Lloyd got to see Rusty before he passed. And, uh, you know, Lloyd was, he was happy that he came. He said, uh, Rusty was able to acknowledge via hand squeezes, you know, that he recognized the voice, he knew who was there, some of that kind of stuff. So, um, so that was a blessing to uh, to Lloyd. Um, I guess they're staying at a hotel in Oklahoma City tonight. He said he'd come by the church and see me tomorrow. So we look forward to seeing Lloyd uh, tomorrow. I don't know anything about any kind of services, whether there will be any or where they will be. Uh, I don't know anything about any of that right now. Um, but as soon as we do, we'll, uh, we'll let you know. So anyway, so that's kind of an update on, uh, on Rusty. Um, uh, Jessica Souther, you might remember, she was a three-year-old uh, baby that... Uh, uh, folks came a couple of weeks ago on Sunday morning and asked us to pray for for her little Jessica. She went in for brain surgery, and the brain surgery went really, really well. Um, she called me last night and uh, said that they were back in the hospital, that uh, Jessica's uh, temperature began to spike every three or four hours uh, to as high as 105 degrees. And uh, so they had put her back in the hospital. Um, I talked, called her this morning and talked to her, and she said that it was still happening. They weren't able to get it under control, uh, even at the hospital last night. And they are thinking that, uh, that there probably is some kind of infection in the shunt that she has that's in her brain. And um, so they were just waiting you know, to try to figure out what all to do, but likely having to go back in and take it out or replace it or, or whatever. So pray for, pray for little Jessica and the Souther family. That's our parents' name are Joy and Aaron. Um, so if you would lift them up, um, and then continue to pray for uh, Drew Steves, uh, Mike and Judy Oglesby son-in-law. That's been uh, hospitalized, still in the hospital after taking after drinking contaminated water, and uh, I had called Mike this afternoon, and I noticed that while I was gone, I'd missed a call from him, so I don't know any more about what's going on other than that, but, but, uh, but continue to pray for him, and uh, uh, continue to pray for Jerry Christopher. Uh, is there any update on Jerry Joe that you know of? No? Oh, okay. Well, they're not they're not here. So, um, anyway, uh, continue to pray for uh, pray for Jerry Christopher, uh, Billy's niece, uh, Leslie Hobbs, uh, Kendra. Kendra is still kind of in a holding period, waiting on healing to occur before having another uh, surgery. Uh, continue to pray for uh, Luke, um, Luke Champion. He goes back to the doctor on August the 29th 
for an evaluation uh, where they will decide if they are ready to reattach his skull or not. And he says, I'm ready. And, uh, of course, they have to wait and see what the doctor says. But be praying for him as he goes back to the doctor on the 29th for his next, uh, next follow-up. Uh, he's probably upstairs in youth tonight. Um, there's a bunch of them up there. There must be 40 or 50 uh, kids up there. Uh, I went up there and kind of just went around and told them hi. But uh, anyway, just uh, continue to lift up our youth ministry. Lift up Caleb uh, as he ministers to those kids and Brian and Shasta and Michael and Rachel and Katie and those that serve up there with him. Um, they're doing a good job with those kids and uh, we can support them in prayer, if nothing else. So we need to be need to be doing that. Um, Steve Kirk, I understand Steve's kind of taking a turn for the worse and having some uh, having some issues going back to Houston. Um, so pray for uh, pray for Steve. Um, and uh, this Sunday, uh, Fred Engelkate asked me if we could add J. H. Welchel. I don't know J.H. Welchel, but I see some folks nodding, so some of you know who he is. Uh, I guess uh, Mr. Welchel's kind of in a bad way with uh, uh, cancer and heart issues, and uh, Fred asked if we, would, if we would pray for Mr. Welchel. So uh, I told him, yes, we would add him to the list and pray for him, so uh, you guys uh, take note of that. And then... Um, Kind of an update on Hartley Brown. Uh, Hartley's the three-year-old great-granddaughter of Susan Scotty Turner that got stabbed in the eye accidentally uh, with a knife. And, and uh, I had contacted Susan a couple of times and, to try to get an update, and she hadn't returned my call. Well, we had a family reunion Saturday that she came to, a co- first cousin's reunion. Of course, Scotty was my first cousin, and uh, Susan came. And uh, she came over and sat down by me, and she said, hey, I'm really sorry that I didn't return your call. You know, I just forgot about it when I got your message. I mean, you guys know how it is. You read a message, and you can't, don't have time right then, and then you forget. And she said uh, that uh, they went to the doctor. They took Hartley back to the doctor. Uh, I don't know if it was last week or the week before. And the doctor examined her, and, and she said, then the doctor said, somebody, somebody has been praying for a miracle this little girl that uh, I guess they are scheduling another surgery for her where they're going to go in and somehow oil the back of the eyeball I mean I can't I have no idea what any of that means or looks like Um, but uh, doctors have not given up hope so I mean they still say she can't see um, but uh, but we're not going to take her off the prayer list all right, when I get a report like that, because that's the exact word I've been using with you guys or what we want to pray for for this little girl, that they might know the glory and the power of God. And uh, so that was, uh, that was an exciting thing uh, to hear. So I wanted to, uh, to share that with you guys. So uh, are there others that we need to add or that I've missed or forgotten about? No. Doris. Okay. All right, guys, excuse me while I answer the phone again. This is Mike Oglesby. Hey, Mike. How are you? I get it. So how's Drew? When you hear something. All right. All right. Thanks, Mike. Bye. All right. He said he thinks he's better. 
He thinks Drew is better. You know, he said he tried to call Laura a little while ago and hadn't been able to get her. So uh, most people forget you have church on Wednesday night. You know, that's... Huh? Yeah. yeah, and see, that's even... That church is even further, right, from folks' mind when they're traveling. And I mean, you guys know how it is. Huh? Perfect timing? Yeah, okay. Well, you guys are graceful to allow me the time to do that. I, um, I hung up on him once, and then he called right back, and I thought, okay, I better, better not do that again. So, anyway, or I, re- I rejected the call. I didn't exactly hang up on him, but anyway. Anyway, so uh, that's kind of what's going on. So let's, let's pray together. Uh, Lord, we, Lord, we thank you for the opportunity to be together tonight. Lord, I, I thank you for these folks that, Lord, that are part of your body that come on, on Wednesday night and join in prayer and join hearts together and trusting you for, Lord, for some great things. Lord, we, uh, we continue to lift these up that are on our prayer sheet. Lord, we lift up our brother Charlie and Mike and and uh, Leroy and Elmer and Lloyd and Doris and Wayne. Lord, we just, uh, God, we pray that you would just uh, put your healing hand on their body. Lord, bring them back to uh, just full health. Lord, we uh, we thank you for the, Lord, for the work that we see and in them and in your name lord we don't take that for granted we know that all healing is from you lord we pray for the warner family with uh, rusty's passing lord we pray for lloyd and for becky and for andy and lord for rusty's kids and uh lord we pray that your will would be done be with the family as they make arrangements and as they grieve together Lord, help them to lean on you, to trust you, to believe in you, to talk about you, to know that you are the God of all comfort. And Lord, we ask you to be with little Jessica Souther, Lord, this three-year-old. Lord, we don't understand brain stuff going on in the life of a little one. Lord, you created her. Lord, we pray that you would uh, take that fever away. We pray that you would give the doctors and surgeons wisdom as they deal with her. We pray that you might grant uh, Aaron and Joy uh, comfort and peace as they uh, are with her and loving on her and just help them to trust you. Lord, we pray for Drew Steves. God, that it, uh, with, uh, with the infection and whatever he has going on after drinking that water, Lord, that you just might heal his body. Lord, we pray that he might give you honor and glory. We pray that you might use this to work in his life to cause him to trust in you. Lord, we lift up Mike and Judy and Laura and all those that love him. We pray that you would, uh, God, comfort them and be with them. Lord, we thank you for what you've done in the life of Hartley Brown. Lord, while, uh, while it may not be a big deal to others, Lord, we just praise you for your work in her life and, Lord, for, uh, for the progress that's been made, little as it may be. Lord, we just trust you that you might work to bring her to healing, bring her family to relationship with you. Lord, we pray for J.H. Welchel, his family. Lord, that you might, uh, God, just reveal yourself to him, that he might know that you are a God of comfort and God of peace. Lord, we know when folks reach out and they say, hey, pray for us, then, Lord, there is a hope that they are reaching for. And, God, you are that hope. You are that hope. Lord, that's the reason that we ask you to answer prayers and to touch people's lives. Is that, Lord, that they may grasp on to the only hope that they have, that they might come to know you as Almighty Father. It's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen.
Amen. Well, thank you all. Well, we are finishing up in uh, Proverbs chapter 29. And uh, the uh, passage that we're in uh, tonight is in Proverbs 29, verse 25. And uh, Proverbs 29, 25 says this, The fear of man brings a snare. The fear of man brings a snare. But whoever trusts in the Lord shall be safe. So, you know, once again, as we look at this, we looked at character issues in the life of men, right? And then what, what the Word says, what, the, you know, the, the writer of Proverbs says, this is, this is going to be the result, or this is the likelihood or the probability of, of, being, of, of, of it being the result. And, and as, I, as I read this, the fear of man brings a snare, but whoever trusts in the Lord shall be safe, brought to mind the, the single truth that you guys have heard me preach more than any other single truth over the last however many years. It's now been a couple of years, that you know, three years maybe, since I started preaching. And that is the antidote for fear is faith right and i mean that's it that 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 fear always is a lack of faith fear always stands in contrast to faith or and and by faith i'm talking about trust trusting in god trusting in the in christ trusting just trusting in the hand of in the hand of God and uh, so that that was kind of the first thing that I thought about it um, but but then the next thing that I thought about the fear of man brings a snare but whoever trusts in the Lord shall be safe is you know it kind of speaks to and this is where we're going to talk about stuff tonight it kind of speaks to this general malady that we have as human beings in being men pleasers. Would any of you guys say, "Yeah, I'm a I'm a people pleaser. I like to I like to please people." Nobody wants to admit to that. I will raise my hand and admit to that. Right? That I pretty much have always tried to please people, to live to live to please people. I want to please people. I want people to like me. I want to do, and, and while you guys didn't raise your hand, I think it's a fairly common malady, right, to be, to be a men pleaser. And, and frankly, oftentimes, at least I, will justify my actions of being a men pleaser, right, uh, saying, well, I mean, the, the basis of that is love. I love people. I want to do, I want to do whatever for people because I love people, right? But probably, at least at some level, the motivation is less than love and more of being a man pleaser, wanting people to think well of me. Or you know, you, you understand what I'm saying, right? So, uh, and, and so I think at its core, that's what that verse is about. Being a man pleaser rather than or above being a God pleaser. Right? Do you guys see that in that verse? Yeah? So, so a question that I have is... Uh, you know, how, how, does the, how does that fear of man, how does that being a man pleaser play out in our lives? Okay, you guys help me. For me as a pastor, what are, what are the dangers of being a man pleaser rather than a God pleaser? Huh? Compromise. Compromise what? Yeah, soft pedal around tough stuff. 
you know, if, I mean, if there's, if there's any uh, criticism of churches that I've heard lately, that's the main one. That preachers refuse to tackle tough issues because of the backlash that it's likely to cause. So, so yeah, that's, that certainly is one, right? Um, how about, what, how other, how else? How about in your life? What are the, what are some, what are some ways or some dangers? I, mean, I won't pick you, you don't have to tell about you, uh, that you see in other people. How being a man pleaser can be, can affect, you know, negatively. Rick. So they have that authority, they have that power, and they could inflict injustice on me, the little guy, and that brings a fear. And so what do we do? Well, we try to be nice. We try to placate them instead of trusting the Lord, trusting that he, what does it say? Another proverb says, the heart of the king is in the hand of the Lord. Yeah. Trust the Lord to work that situation. Trust him that I don't have to fear their injustices and their wrongs that they do, but I should look to the Lord. Okay. So living in fear of man, literal fear of man. Yeah. Okay. But it, it could be a boss. It could be bad cops. It could be the ju- uh, judicial system. It could be taxes. Man, they just raised my taxes a bunch. So all of that. Yeah. Fear takes lots of different avenues, doesn't it? Uh, you know, in the, in the prayer requests that we got for teachers, there were, I mean, probably the number one thing, if, if, if we were to number them all, the number one prayer request or the number one thing was anxiety. Anxiety. And... Um, Mental health, fear of mental, I mean, mental health issues. Uh, I mean, teachers in the lives of their students, not that we've got teachers that are, I mean, although there are, but um, just the the fear of of those issues cropping up in the lives of kids and in the lives of stuff. Um, Just lots of, lots of that kind of stuff. You guys remember how I started this, right? That Fear is, fear is a, just a, I, don't, I mean, I hate to say lack of because that sounds so negative, but fear and faith are just inversely correlated. The greater your faith, lower your fear. The greater your fear, the lower your faith. I mean, and, and you can't help it. That's just the way it is. You can't be fearful and faithful at the same time. I mean, you can. You can be Faithful about one thing and fearful about another at the same time, probably. That makes sense? But I'm talking generally, life of faith versus a life of fear. And, uh, and, and there's no easy way out of it other than just a continual dependence upon God and recognition that this is what's going on in my life and, and some of that kind of stuff. So other, other, I, other things in life where we have this fear of man that affects stuff. You know, I re- I've had more time to reflect on this than you guys, obviously, but, but I, I thought about my own life. And, you know, back before I was a preacher, not before I was a Christian, but before I was a minister, I was in a sales, sales and marketing organization. And, uh, and I was driven, my performance was evaluated and driven on sales quotas, right? I mean, I represented manufacturers, and they had quarterly, sometimes monthly sales figures that they, in their mind, I had to hit, right? I mean, I had to, there was no option. You had to hit these sales quotas. And and I think about how I, how I dealt with that, 
right? And, and I would have to say that oftentimes, and, and you got to understand, you know, when I did that, it's not like I had one number. I represented like, you know, 50 manufacturers at a time, right? So there were like 50 numbers, you know, every quarter that you had to make from all these different companies. But I think about the poor people that worked for me. How, how I took, oftentimes, would take that pressure, would take that fear of not pleasing the manufacturer and project that onto people that work for me. Now, I, you know, I hope I didn't do it all the time. been so long ago now, I probably forgot how bad I was, right? But, but it occurred to me as I, as I thought about all of this that, that the fear or the, the, the being a man pleaser, trying to please those hot shots that were the big bosses over me, right, caused me to react in a way that was probably less than what it should have been towards the people that worked for me. And, and I just kind of got under conviction about that that, that, that. That's not right. I shouldn't have been like that, right? So, so you know, so, so and, and I think that's common. I mean, I think, I think that's a common practice in business. I think that's a common way that we operate with people. I think it's probably common in school systems, you know, in order to make the, increase the test scores or, you know, whatever, whatever your jobs are, that we take that, that job and that, where we try to please men and we end up doing something with it that's probably not so pleasing to men. And as I thought about it from my own case, I thought about, here's, here's the way, Marty, you should have done it, right? Number one, those people that press the quotas upon you, right? They're only doing that because that's being pressed upon them, <laughs> right? But somewhere, that has to stop because somewhere there's somebody at the bottom that can't pass it to anybody else except the dog. You know what I mean? or the kids, or the wife at home, and that ain't right. So, you trust the Lord. You work hard. You work hard. And you do everything that you can. I do everything in my, that I can to meet their quotas without adversely affecting the people around me. And I leave the results to God. And if the number gets made, great. And if the number doesn't get made, then take whatever I got coming to me. Does, any of that, make, does that make sense? I mean, I just, I just thought, you know, I don't know. They call it the kick the dog thing, right? You have a bad day at work. You come home and take it out on the wife. The wife takes it out on the kids. The kids go kick the dog, right? I mean, it just, you know, flows, <laughs> flows downhill. And... And, and I think that that's the snare. The snare is missing out on what God has for us because we seek to please men, however that might look. Sometimes that's just ourself. Right? We set our own goals. We set our own, have our own expectations but become men-pleasers rather than God-pleasers, where if we live in faith trusting God and our lives are lived, and, and, and I get it, this isn't easy, it isn't easy for me either, but I, but I am consciously as aware as often as God would allow me to be consciously aware that I need to seek, seek Him first. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and His righteousness and all these other things will be added to you. Right? That if I'm seeking to please God first, right, then the rest of the stuff will, will take care of itself. There's no snare. The fear of man brings a snare, but whoever trusts in the Lord shall be, shall be safe. Right? Well, you know, I, I think that, uh, I think, I think that, uh, that the concept works in every area of life. You know, I, See it, we see it in the lives of 
We see it in the lives of family members all the time. I mean, I had a conversation just a few days ago where one was relaying to me a conversation that they had with, you know, with one of their friends and that they just, they, they, they hated their parents because of the way their parents treated them when they were young. Well, that's a shame, right? At some point, somewhere in that, there is, a, there is an item where we've become, where they become people pleasers rather than God pleasers. It, happens, it can happen with parents and their kids too, right? I see it all the time, right? Where a parent knows... I get in these discussions with my oldest son quite often, actually, because he's hard, right? But it's like, hey, you got to parent. You got to be the parent. It means you got to say no. You can't just let them do all of that stuff. You guys remember the Andy Griffith show? You guys seen that? The Andy Griffith show where somebody says that he ought to, you know, let, let uh, Opie do whatever, and he said no. No, you can't do that with the youngins. He said, they'll see every little shiny thing that comes along and they'll reach up for it and grab it and it's not, that's not good for them. Right? Well, we, we've seen that happen in our culture more and more over the last 50 years. Some of you, it's your fault. It's my fault. You know that we, we want to please our kids. So we don't parent them well. We don't discipline them well. We, I mean, you understand what I'm saying? I mean, it's, it happens with all of us if we're not careful. And, but there's, there's, that doesn't mean we need to be mean, right? It doesn't mean that we're so strict that we don't do anything, right? What did uh, uh, does any of you read the Baptist Messenger thing this week about that Russell, what Russell Moore wrote in there about grandparents or the ruination of society? Yeah, because kids need law and kids need grace. Parents and teachers are law. Clean your room, brush your teeth, comb your hair, do your homework. Law. Teachers, pay attention, sit down, quit talking. Law. And he said, you remember the Waltons? You know, John Boy, get in trouble by dad. Dad would get on to him, you know, for something they weren't doing right, and he'd be out on the front porch, you know, crying. Well, who'd come out? Grandpa. Come out and put his arm around him. Oh, it's okay, John boy. Grace. So there's got to be this balance between grace and law, and I get that, but it takes trusting in God to be able to do those things right. And none of us probably did it right. You know what I mean? I mean, we all would look back probably and say, yeah, I've had all of these kind of issues in my life. But it's never too late to be aware, and to be conscious of these things, in my opinion. And uh, anyway, fear of man brings a snare, but whoever trusts in the Lord shall be safe. You guys got anything to add or anything that you think about with it? What do you think the snare is? The fear of man brings a snare. Huh? Yeah. I think of it as an anchor. A what? An anchor. An anchor? Yeah. Because you're afraid it holds you back. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. There's, there's this incredible sovereign balance between yielding and trusting in God, right, and working as hard as you can. Wayne?
Amen. <laughs> it would. Whoever trusts in the Lord shall be safe. He makes no mistakes. And even, I mean, we, 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 we must uh, work. We must work to learn to trust more, to grow in faith. I don't mean works as in doing something. Works, you know, works in the Bible is just obedience, right? We trust in the Lord. We're obedient to what he says, and, and we trust him. And whatever happens, like I said, it preaches real easy. It's harder to live. I get it. But anyway, anybody else got anything? All right, well, let's go. Lord, I thank you for your word. Thank you for the truth of your word. Lord, I thank you for the simplicity of your word that just speaks over and over to us. And Lord, may, uh, Lord, we ask you that as your children, that you fill us with your Holy Spirit. Lord, that you help us to be uh, a people that live by faith and not by fear. Always. And it's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Hey friends, before you go, if you have a prayer request, we invite you to send us an email at prayforyou@att.net. That's P-R-A-Y, the number four, Y-O-U at att.net. Or call the church office at 405-381-2492. If you'd like to learn more about our children's, youth, men's, women's, or senior adult ministries, visit our website at fbctuttle.net. Thanks again for joining us today. We love you and we hope you have a blessed week.